paying tribute to Dr. John, what comes out of you when you're playing his songbook? Uh, you know, I mean, uh, the word that comes to mind is absolute gratitude to be able to do that and to be able to do it naturally and be with the group, with our group of guys that all that we all come up under this shit, you know? And everybody knew him, you know, and we 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 eat, sleep, and breathe that that stuff, you know. And to be able to play it and know that we're we're like true to what it, what the essence of those songs were when we first heard them, and to re uh, reimagine them now, playing them, and to to, to pay respect to the original versions, because we, we like doing that. We like, especially that stuff, you know, like, like, like Max stuff, man. We love the fact that we know how it felt when you first heard that record. Mm. And, and when you listen to those records over the years, and then you hear little shit that you didn't really hear before. Like, I like the fact that they use that little RMI piano on a lot of shit. <laughs> I love that. And, um, I was told that he wasn't really that fond <laughs> of that, of that, 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 sound. that. I, I'm sure he loved the RMI piano because a lot of cats utilized that 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 uh, that instrument back in the days and put that on a lot of records. But uh, yeah, I, I heard Alan Alan pull that shit out and say, "Hey, play it, try it on this." That's what I heard. Now I'm, I don't know. I don't know. I never really got to ask him how he felt about that stuff, but he sure played the shit out of it. You know, he played it, and it's got a thing about it that's just. And you know he plays piano. You know you could picture him playing the piano, but when you hear those records and you hear that sound, that's some bad shit. It's like, okay, it's not a clavinet. What is that? I said, oh, I think it's an R R M I R M I pianet piano combo thing they call them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Man, now you know I'm feel absolutely honored to be able to play that stuff, and know in my heart and soul that we're doing justice to that to that music. Amen, and like, you are. We're representing that shit like, okay, we're not just covering that, we like in it. We in it and we feel like we, the spirit, his spirit is with us when we kind of, you know, doing that shit, you know? Absolutely, yeah. and you are, you are carrying the torch and you're doing it so well.
place, wrong time. You played with Dr. John as a young, young person. Tell us about that experience. I had lived in New Orleans. I moved here when I was a teenager. And there was a point where the immigration department decided I'd probably drunk enough Dixie beers and it was time <laughs> to go home. So I went home, missing New Orleans hugely and put a huge stamp on me. Dr. John came over to do some gigs and it was unusual because he hadn't played in England for a long, long, long time. And um, the guitar player that uh, had the gig couldn't make it for some reason, I got hired. So I went, we had a gig that night, and I went to meet uh, Mac at a flat in Brixton in South London. And there was no piano. We were going to rehearse for the gig, and there was no piano. And so I just, we just passed my Fender Telecaster back and forth, and he showed me what he was going to do. And one of the things was this piano introduction to a song, and it was the tune I play tonight, uh, Sonata Rag. He played me the whole thing on the guitar. Oh, it really? blew. I already knew the tune. I love this tune. And I spent hours sitting there trying to figure it out because it's in strange keys, it modulates, it's got big tenth, it's got all this difficult, complicated stuff, but there's um, a beautiful, simple, and sweet, charming melody. Hard to play on a piano, pretty much impossible to play on a guitar, but he said, yeah, show me. And he just he played the whole thing. He said, I'm going to do that, and then we're going to go into this little funk tune. <laughs> and so we did that, we, we, we did that, and the gig was great. And then the next day, we had to go to the BBC to do a session for the World Service. And after the session was over, everyone had split, and it was just me and Mac sitting in the studio. Everyone else was gone, and he was just sitting at the piano, and um, we got talking about little Willie John, who uh, I was crazy about at the time. And he, I, I guess he was kind of surprised, he seemed to be surprised to find anybody who knew anything about little Willie John, but <laughs> especially, a, you know, somebody in England who wasn't of that generation. Um, and so we traded a couple of tunes, and I said to him, I, I got on the piano and said, can you give me some pointers? Am I doing this? I played Tipitina, um, because that's something I'd been playing since I was a kid, since I first heard my uncle had probably one of the only copy on 45 in, in the whole of England, <laughs> she'd brought back from New Orleans. And, um, and, he, and he kind of dug it, and he said, you know what, tonight on the gig, let's switch around, and I'll play guitar and you play piano. So I was kind of nervous, it was just for a couple of tunes. But then that's what we did on the rest of the gigs. We'd switch and he pl <laughs> played guitar and I would play piano. When was that? And that's kind of how we became friends. That was probably about 1984. Wow. 83, 84, something like that. And then, um, and then more recently I was in his band again about five years ago. Um, and played second keys and a bit of guitar and some keyboards and stuff. Take a walk to the dark in the 
And I remember Mac being this cat that was like, he was obviously respected by everybody. And I mean, he was a musician, you know, he played guitar, he played keyboards. I remember later on seeing that he he, he took on the persona of the night the night trip of thing and the right. di- I'm like oh that's the, that's Dr. John, and you know he was one of those guys that I would see him every now every so often he would pop up and and Dr. John would be wh- whatever the set might have been you know um, whether it be at a recording studio or at somebody's house or at RT's house or something. And Dr. John's on the scene, and he just had this 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 air about him, the way he talked, the way he dressed. He was just hip. He was like, <laughs> if there was a, you know, I mean, I knew a lot of hip people. I mean, I had seen and encountered a lot of hip people. Some of them like real bad cats, you know. Some of them like you would would scare the shit out of you. <laughs> but I definitely, he was definitely up there as far as one of the hippest people that I had ever seen. I mean, he's up there with probably my Uncle Jolly would be, that was like the coolest, hippest cat that I had ever seen when I was growing up. 